Alright, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sonko here. Welcome back to the channel. And today, no news, just got something a little different for you. Checking out the Bitcoin white paper. If you guys haven't read the Bitcoin white paper and you've been into crypto for some time, shame on you. Just Google it, Bitcoin white paper. It's really good. It's super classic. And it just gets right to the point. And there's no selling. And it describes Bitcoin pretty much better than anybody can. But one thing it kind of doesn't do all that well is really describe the mining uh, in a simple way. It just shows quick diagrams of it. And it does get the point across for anybody that reads this. And I sort of realized that I never really made a video explaining what mining actually does. What does your computer do? What is it, what is it doing? How is it bringing extra Bitcoin into existence, etc.? And I'm not gonna get into super big detail. This video is gonna be fairly short, but it's gonna be like an explain it like I'm five, like an Eli five type video. <clears throat> and again, I strongly urge anybody to read this. I'll actually put the, the Bitcoin white paper link in the description below. Just click on it and it gives you a pretty good idea of it. And it's really interesting to read uh, what Satoshi Nakamoto you know, wanted the world to read. So this was posted in 2008. Bitcoin came out in 2009. But to really understand Bitcoin a little bit, we got to look at a couple things. And now I, I made a video in the past of, of predecessors of Bitcoin, things that were and things that almost came to be. Uh, but it's important to know sort of the history of money and, you know, going from a barter society or race of people to then realizing, hey, we could just have this like expensive uh, little chips of gold or some kind of item that we can carry around and it would just be universal and I can buy your chickens or your skins or your meat or this or that with it and I won't have to bring all of my things with me in order to trade them with you and maybe you don't want any of my things but I still need your stuff so of course that's the advent of money and it got bigger and bigger uh you know even uh, way back uh, in the day Henry Ford uh was brought up uh, the idea of an energy-based currency. He thought that, uh, you know, like maybe electric companies could effectively produce a, a currency um, that, that coincides with the amount of electricity they produce. And in some ways, that's kind of a good idea because it really sort of is the basis of Bitcoin as an energy currency. Uh, but then again, when you think about it, not really so good because then all the electric companies would have all the money and they would be like your government. So that wouldn't work in the end, but uh, it was certainly a revolutionary idea that was sort of overlooked. Um, one thing that was actually successful and worked was was hash cash. So this is one of the first cryptocurrencies, but it really was not a currency. And it was a proof of work system like Bitcoin uh, to limit email spam. So basically, uh, if you were an email spammer and you were going to send out a million, two million plus emails in a day or in a month, um, you could do that really easy. You just press the button and it's going to send to everybody. Um, however, um, then you can't verify in your email if this email that came to you is spam or not. Now, nowadays, it's a little bit better. You have a spam filter and Google and various uh, email services are, are good at sort of preventing mass spam, kind of. Uh, but so with this, you could essentially have a network of individuals sending emails to and from of each other, and they could know that the emails coming from this system are legit because your computer would have to solve uh, a, a proof of work algorithm uh, and then send it out. It would only take a second or two for your computer to send each email, which on an individual basis is not a problem. If even if I wanted to send 20, 30, 50 emails out, I could press the button, let my computer go to work and walk away for a couple of minutes and get a cup of coffee or something. So not a big deal. But if you were a spammer and you needed to send out a million emails, well, one second, two seconds per email, is way too much time. And it also took a little bit of CPU time uh, prior, you know, once you actually received it, but it was basically a split second and your computer wouldn't even realize it, um, you know, just opening one email. So you would get a hash at the end of it and you knew in your, in your email, if you looked at it, 
it was a legit email. It actually took real proof of work to send this to you. Uh, then there was Bitgold, uh, but the problem with Bitgold was it's very, very, very similar to Bitcoin. It never actually existed though. However, uh, Bitgold relied on a quorum of network addresses rather than actual hash power. Um, so that's how Bitcoin solved the 51% attack problem. Although it didn't really solve it, if you still get 51% of the hash rate, you can still do some damage, but it's gonna cost you a lot of money. The problem with Bitgold is that it relied only on the nodes, and so you could essentially Sybil attack it, which is making a bunch of fake nodes and a bunch of computers that pretend to be a node and say, oh yeah, I'm a node, send money this way or do this on the network, and you could just, um, you could easily fool the network. So Bitcoin is essentially broken up. There are nodes that verify transactions, um, and then there are miners that actually hash and send transactions. Um, and so it, it sort of split up that power. And instead of just being able to Sybil attack the network with a bunch of fake nodes, uh, you would have to get a bunch of hash rate. And that's actually stated in the white paper that you're more than likely going to play by the rules because it's going to cost you so much money to 51% attack Bitcoin that it's not going to be worth it. And then when you do, the chain is just going to split uh, the correct way because the rest of the miners are not going to agree with you. So uh, come 2009, we have Bitcoin. And what you do, uh, back in the day, there were no mining pools. You would have to set up your own node on a computer and then mine to that node. Um, you know, maybe within your own network, uh, maybe just have individual nodes, individual computers all mining. And you would just use your CPU. Nowadays, we can't really do that. But what's going on in something like this uh, that is, is able to well, somewhat mine Bitcoin if you only want eight cents a day, maybe tops. Uh, but we since have ASICs now, but a lot of uh, things, you of course, use the graphics card. So, uh, you know, if you want to start mining, uh, your computer begins uh, the, the mining process. But what is actually going on there? Well, Bitcoin, uh, if the very first uh, block, the Genesis block, had to be sort of rigged a little bit because it didn't it, it was unsolvable um, so it was sort of rigged and then the second block actually began and that's when mining began uh, with Bitcoin and Bitcoin asks a simple question to your computer it uses the SHA-256 algorithm uh, made interestingly by the NSA but a lot but anybody can really use it uh, it asks a simple question it wants an answer and that answer is so many zeros. We have Bitcoin, that'll make more sense in just a moment here. We have the Blockchain Explorer up for Bitcoin. This is one of the latest blocks. And this is 19, I believe this is 19 zeros. I actually counted the other day and we were up to 19. So let's assume this is 19 zeros. So Bitcoin currently is asking your computer, uh, put in some kind of gibberish into the SHA-256 algorithm, and what comes out must, the answer must have 19 zeros and something thereafter. Uh, so it has to be a very small digit, if you wanna say. If you, if you, were, to put a, uh, if you were to put a decimal right here at the, at the beginning, you would have to have a digit very, very small. That's what it's asking you for. So the answer to uh, mining is not what you put in, but actually what comes out. Uh, so you solving it, there could be multiple solutions to what you're doing. Okay, so, but, he, but this is with the difficulty nowadays. And the difficulty, of course, is very high. We have something like 100 quintillion hashes per second in the world. Think about that number, not trillion, not quadrillion, quintillion hashes per second. So that means your computer and everybody else's computer or ASIC, whatever, is essentially trying over and over just a bunch of gibberish into the system. And then it uses the SHA-256 algorithm and sees what comes out. Now let, let's, let's see that in real time. And let's imagine, let's imagine that Bitcoin is at its very first block and its difficulty is very low right now. Nobody is mining. And it asks you, for one zero, one zero, 
Well, we could figure that out pretty quick. And you could figure that out on pen and paper. You could write down a word or gibberish and then apply the SHA-256 algorithm if you knew it uh, and then come out with a solution. The, the, the idea that this is proof of work is because you don't know. You have no way of knowing what, uh, what digits together would create something that would come out with a SHA-256 hash with one zero or even 19. So you need 10 minutes of, right now, approximately 10 minutes per block of Bitcoin because every 10 minutes a block is finished and more Bitcoin are essentially created or released into the world, however you really want to put it, um, or mined every 10 minutes. So 100 quintillion hashes per second for 10, 10 minutes, for 600 seconds. It's an incredible number for sure. So we want to do the very first hash of Bitcoin. We need to find anything that will give us a, a SHA-256 hash that starts with one zero. And so if we plugged in our old GPU, it could do it in an absolute second. This GPU, even though it's an old 980, is absolutely littered with probably a billion little, uh, a million billion little transistors and computer chips inside of it that all can easily run the SHA-256. And that's why it's better than your CPU. Um, but again, we're at the very start with just a CPU. Uh, so let's type in anything. We can type in anything in here. Uh, we can just type in the word bean and see what we get. No, we, we failed. We did not get it. Uh, but what's interesting is that if you type in bean, it's always going to give you the same thing. It's always going to give you B. Uh, we could type in some gibberish. And hey, there we go. We just found it. We literally just found uh, we solved a block. That is basically Bitcoin mining in a nutshell. Is that uh, what is your computer going to produce uh, that will produce the answer? This is the answer. This is the correct answer. One zero. Not really the rest of this. Not this. This is actually the answer. We were just trying gibberish. But let's go back. See, if we go back to uh, just the word bean, we get B3FA55 again. Uh, we, we can change this. We can put, we can put a capital uh, and it's going to change it to 1D0. Uh, we can change this and, and put a, an exclamation on the end. And congratulations, we solved it again. We produced another block. But if Bitcoin uh, decided to raise its difficulty, because every, I think it's 14 days, I actually always get that mixed up, seven or 14 days, the Bitcoin algorithm, um, the difficulty increases. And the difficulty increase is simply, now Bitcoin says, I want another zero. I want another zero on there. Uh, and that's gonna be a little bit harder. How are we gonna get another zero? We can just kind of try. Uh, are we gonna get two zeros? Nope. Uh, and, and see, this is where it actually becomes uh, very difficult. And your computer would try this uh, over and over and over and over and over. Um, but going back to the Bitcoin white paper, you might say, okay, well, if my, Bitcoin, if my computer has to try this over and over and over, every time there's a new block, um, where does it start? How does it know where to begin? How does it know uh, not to just start with one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, and, and so on? Uh, but there is a Bitcoin nonce. And uh, so this is the proof of work in the Bitcoin white paper here. And you can see that the previous hash um, um, follows a nonce. And the nonce is essentially, um, hey, this is a good starting point. That's basically what it is. Hey, this is a good starting point. So it fills up with transactions. Uh, and this is the previous hash. So the previous hash uh, that we've seen when we typed in and we got a zero, that would be it. And let's say the difficulty increases. Um, you know, the nonce is going to is going to uh, essentially say, "Hey, this is a good starting point." Uh, the difficulty increased. Uh, this is this is a previous from what was previously found. We found that this is going to increase. And so your your computer is essentially um, told, "Hey, you should probably start with more digits." essentially. Uh, so if we want to get two zeros, it's actually it's actually kind of hard. Uh, I got one zero. Uh, you know, who, what, what do I even type in here? A bunch of digits, randoms. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Whatever gets me two zeros. So that, so when you see uh, when you see this 19 zeros like this, how would I ever as a man, as one person produce 19 zeros in a SHA-256 hash calculator, uh, it would be outright impossible and would take me till the end of time and back and maybe again. Um, so that's the idea with Bitcoin and that it's, it's pseudo private 
by sending your private keys and, or by sending by using your your public key, uh, but not really. Uh, you can kind of you can kind of see that here. There, there's a little privacy segment on it, and it's it's basically saying that you know since the public c can see that someone is sending us uh, an amount to someone else, but without information linking the transaction to anybody, it's essentially private. And now we know today it, it's definitely not so private, especially if you have something like a Coinbase account, right? You would think, oh man, this is this is my private private key, and you're sending things around. Definitely not. Because uh, all those all those can be just trans uh, traced right back. Um, so pseudo private. If nobody ever knew you were linked to your public key, it would be difficult. But uh, if you're making transactions to fiat and buying things and sending them to your house or this that or the other thing, uh, it's going to be pretty easy to see pretty quick. But in terms of when I look at this block in in Bitcoin, um, I, I can know for sure. I don't have to trust anybody. I see that somebody created a hash that has 19 zeros in it. And that took 100 quintillion hashes per second for 10 minutes for somebody to find that. 100 quintillion per second for 600 seconds. So uh, the number simply astronomical uh, in attempts to try and get 19 zeros. I honestly have no clue how many digits I would have to produce uh, in order to get a SHA-256 hash that started with 19 zeros. The odds of that are just mind-bogglingly, it's just staggering. Um, what, it, what even is 100 quintillion times 600? I mean, like, are we talking, we're talking septillions of attempts uh, before you actually find it. So I, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope I made it somewhat clear on what exactly is going on in your computer when you're actually mining. And this goes with a lot of algorithms. Some algorithms might treat it slightly differently or this, that, or the other thing, but this is essentially it. Your computer isn't doing um, hard math. Uh, it already has the SHA-256 instructions and it's putting it into it and it's like Plinko. Your computer is just going on command on the SHA-256 algorithm and poop out the other side is a different uh, jargonous number that is associated with what you put in there and can be reversed with enough processing power, but it would be uh, pretty hard to go back up the Plinko board, uh, if that's a good analogy. Uh, but that is Bitcoin mining in a nutshell. Uh, when you get that, you send that out to all the nodes. Uh, you say, hey, look, uh, 19, this satisfied, this, this satisfied uh, Bitcoin's demand of 19 zeros at this current difficulty. And it goes out to all the nodes in the world and they look at it and they go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they say, and then the, the miner gives himself some Bitcoin plus uh, the Bitcoin from the from the fees that um, that uh, that in that 10 minute block period as well. So you can see uh, this was a block reward of 12.5. Uh, also, the miner or the pool, likely the pool, uh, received uh, 0.18 extra that was dispersed if it was a pool. Um, but you can see uh, it, it, everyone includes a nonce, and that's sort of the, your beginning point uh, for the software where you're going to begin sh hashing. And then once you find something successfully that has 19 zeros or 20 zeros or 15 zeros, wherever di Bitcoin's difficulty is at at the time, uh, and then you find something else past that, you find a number that begins with 19, uh, congratulations. You just got yourself some Bitcoin. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I didn't ramble too much. I kind of wanted to make this video for a little while, and I thought it would be very, a little bit interesting to sort of just put this in a, in a more of a conversation tone instead of um, you know like incredibly complex or something like that. But um, either way, I'll see you guys next time.